Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 2nd, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Ghislaine Maxwell was convicted of recruiting teenage girls for financier Jeffrey Epstein to entice, transport, and traffic for sexual abuse from 1994 to 2004. Lawyers for Maxwell had asked U.S. District Judge Allison J. Nathan to reject the verdict on multiple grounds, including insufficient evidence. The judge said in her written ruling that the jury's guilty verdicts were readily supported by extensive witness testimony and documentary evidence, therefore rejecting the request to overturn Ghislaine's conviction. Ghislaine was arrested in July 2020 and is still incarcerated. She will receive her full sentencing for her crimes in June. In other news, volunteers from the International Plant Parenthood Federation have delivered nearly 3,000 packets of morning after pills to areas of the Ukraine that have been most affected by the Russian invasion. The BBC has uncovered evidence of Ukrainian women being raped by invading soldiers during the war in villages a few miles from Kyiv. A woman living 45 minutes west of Kyiv, who's only identified as Anna, shared that in early March she had been at home with her husband when a foreign soldier barged in. She said, at gunpoint, he took me to a house nearby. He ordered me, take off your clothes or I'll shoot you. He kept threatening to kill me if I didn't do as he said. Then he started raping me. She went on to describe that the rape was interrupted by four more soldiers who entered the empty home where she was being assaulted and they took the soldier away. When she returned home, she found that her husband had been shot in the abdomen and he died two days later because they could not reach a hospital. Anna buried her husband in her garden. An NPR report suggests that rape in Ukraine at the hands of Russian soldiers is widespread. Earlier this month, following the Russian withdrawal from Bukha, a suburb of the capital, Kiev, nearly two dozen women and girls were systematically raped by Russian forces, according to Ukraine's Ombudsman for Human Rights, Lemula Denisova. Rape is now being used as a weapon of destruction in the Russian war against Ukraine. In other news, according to a study by Florida House Experience Health, 87% of women and 65% of men compare themselves to others on social media, often causing mental health issues that impact self-confidence and trigger eating disorders. Alana Vandersleeze, the founder of Freedom with Food and Fitness, an online community that helps women to heal their relationships with food, says she understands all too well the negative impact that social media can make on a woman's life choices. She also describes a solution that has helped her and hundreds of other women. Welcome to the Feisty, Alana. Tell us all about the process that you use to help women overcome issues with food. Well, first, T. Erica, thank you so much for having me on the Feisty. I'm so excited to be here. A lot of us are chronic dieters. You know, we keep going from diet after diet after diet to try to lose the weight that we think we need to lose. Uh, and then that results in a lot of overeating, a lot of binge eating, and just a general distrust of our own judgment when it comes to food and also the food itself. So intuitive eating is an anti-diet philosophy. We're not necessarily anti-weight loss, but we're anti-weight loss as the primary goal. So it's anti-diet philosophy that's backed by research. And it basically says that we go back to the way that we were as children. We eat when we're hungry, we stop when we're full, we honor our cravings, but we also keep nutrition in mind as well. So it's a more holistic approach to our bodies and our weight and the food that we eat. Alana, can you explain what the real issue with food is for women? Are women eating for entertainment? Are women eating for pleasure? What is the problem as you see it? That's such a great question. So the problem isn't actually the food. And that's one thing that I love to tell my clients is a lot of people come to me and they say, I just want to lose the last 15 pounds. 
or I just can't trust myself around food. Food is the problem. And food is actually not the problem. What I tell my clients is that it has to do with what I call salve, S-A-L-V. It's a need for either safety, acceptance, love, and validation. And we're trying to heal the fact that we don't have enough of those things through dieting and getting this perfect body. And it, it messes up our relationship with food and with ourselves, with our own body image. Thank you so much, Elena, for creating this community to help women to overcome issues with food and self-love. Be sure to find Alana on Instagram at Freedom with Food and Fitness. Well, it's time for a break. What do you do when you find out that you're pregnant with twins again? What did Donna have to learn to trigger her feisty life? Answers to these questions right after the break. Don't miss it. Hi. Jazz here from JD Bath Co. My mission started with the creation of a vagina friendly bath soak, Bomb AF, my love letter to women, but it didn't stop there. JD Bath Co now has an entire line of clean beauty products made for sensitive skin. From our handmade soaps to our skin conditioning and clearing oils to our best selling organic rose oil or one of our many organic, vegan, cruelty-free body creams, or the newly added line of body scrubs. JD Bathco is located in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, and we would love to have you shop with us. Come check us out at www.jdbathco.com. Look forward to seeing you. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about Kimberly Alicon? Well, according to today, Kimberly Alicon is one special woman. Define the odds of one in 200,000 to become pregnant with three sets of twins without using IVF. Kimberly is 37 years old and together she and her husband, John, have 10 children living in their home right now. Kimberly told today that she grew up with 18 siblings. Her mom had 10 biological children and then she adopted eight more. She also shared that her husband was raised with just one brother and yearned for a big family. Well, John, your wish came true. I wonder how many gallons of milk they buy at the grocery store. <laughs> Congratulations, Kimberly and John. In other news, we're living the feisty life and honestly, Sometimes it is not as easy as it sounds. The key to being feisty is knowing how to speak up for yourself. But what if we are taught to be quiet? That's exactly what happened to Donna. And she had to learn how to overcome that. And now Donna says she's living her most authentic life. Donna, tell everyone what you had to learn to do in order to be feisty. Hi, my name is Donna and I've learned how to speak my mind. When I was younger, the household that I was raised in was uh, a very chaotic, very scattered, very abusive upbringing. And it was never okay for me to speak my mind, much less really be able to speak at all because my mother would always silenced me whenever I spoke up and tried to tell her how I was feeling about something, share feelings, um, tell her what I wanted to be when I grew up. It was always thwarted. It was always, no, you are not, not going to do that. You are going to do as I tell you. And finally, I, I left the house when I was 19 years old 
and uh, got a job. I was offered a position as a licensed practical nurse in a hospital, children's hospital in Chicago. And when I left that house, it was like a brand new me. I was just ready to just go out into the world and uh, work as a nurse and just be my own person. And that has stayed with me ever since because of the abusive and chaotic upbringing that I had. I was very anxious, very depressed, very lonely, very rebellious. Um, I was unable to hold down jobs. I was unable to maintain friendships. I was fearful of my mother. I was mistrustful of any authority figure. I was just afraid to really trust people. And I, I was very afraid because I, I was um, fearful that people were not going to accept me for the opinions that, that I gave. People were not going to like me very much because, you know, I certainly wasn't um, wasn't liked in my house and I had to go through a lot of therapy to um, to undo that damage that uh, that that I endured when I was very young I really learned that it was okay to be me that it was okay to speak my mind and I, I really felt free, especially when I got to leave the house and to go out into the working world and to work as a nurse and be um, looked up to as a nurse um, and just got more, more brave that, you know, learning that indeed through therapy that it was definitely okay to to be me and to speak my mind in in my in my friendships um, I lost some some good friends because I spoke my mind it, it kind of momentarily made me take some pause to try to um, examine and you know maybe maybe I came on too strong or uh, you know to kind of question um, if there was something that you know, that I said that was too strong, but I was just voicing my opinions. And I really felt concerned for these friends. And that's where I was coming from, a place of being concerned. I, I thought to myself, no way am I gonna stop voicing my opinions. I'm gonna continue to be honest. When, when you're younger, you are so concerned about you know, about uh, pleasing people and being liked and being accepted. And now it's more about letting people know who you really are and feeling comfortable in your own skin, which I definitely do at this stage. It's taken all my life to get to this point, but that's where I'm at right now. Thank you, Donna, for sharing your story that shares your secret to being feisty. It's never too late to learn how to speak your mind. In other news, NAMI announces the release of Meet Little Monster, a mental health coloring and activity book created for young children as a tool for them to express and explore their feelings in a fun, creative, and empowering way, as well as to help foster dialogue between children and the safe adults in their lives. NAMI is proud to make Meet Little Monster available for download to families, organizations, teachers, and young people at no cost in English and Spanish. It also includes a list of mental health resources. Visit the NAMI website for the free download. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Here we go. Welcome to the feisty.
for women. 